Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Welcome learners. My name is Stephen Kariungi and we continue with our topic of discussion on the reaction rates and reversible reactions. And at this stage we are discussing the third factor that affects the position of the equilibrium and this is pressure. The effect of pressure on the position of equilibrium. And like, I, like we said earlier, pressure will only affect the position of equilibrium if the reaction involves gases, not solids and not liquids. So we are saying that pressure only affects the position affects the position of the equilibrium if the reaction involves gases only if the reaction involves gas, gases only. And this is because gases are compressible. They can be compressed by a higher pressure. So the effect here, we say that uh, increase in pressure shifts the equilibrium to the side that has fewer molecules. So if you increase the pressure of a system that is at equilibrium, it will shift that equilibrium to the side that has fewer molecules. So equally, when the pressure is reduced, when the pressure is reduced, it shifts the equilibrium, it shifts the equilibrium to the side with more molecules. And we'll see an example there. Uh, we have A in the contact process where sulfur four oxide combines with oxygen to form sulfur six oxide. So we have that reaction. So here uh, we have, we need to make sure we balance the equation first. Three, two, two, two S, K. That equation is balanced. So on this side we have two molecules of sulfur four oxide plus one molecule of oxygen. So on this side we have three molecules. On the other side we have only two molecules. So when we increase the pressure, when we increase the pressure we will shift the equilibrium to the side that has fewer molecules. And that's what you are saying that uh, increase in pressure shifts the equilibrium to the side that has fewer molecules. So this side has three molecules and this side has two molecules. So increase in pressure will shift the equilibrium towards the side with fewer molecules. But if we decrease the pressure, we will 
uh, shift the equilibrium to the left where we have a higher number of molecules. So when the pressure is reduced, the equilibrium shifts to the side with more molecules. So this is a decrease in uh, pressure. So that's an example that we can use to study the effect of pressure on the equilibrium. So lastly, we are going to discuss the industrial applications of the concept concept of equilibrium in other words we are saying that the concept of equilibrium is applied in industries for example one in the contact process in the contact process that follows that equation that is the equation for the contact process which is delta h is equals to negative 197 kilojoules per mole I think I can confirm that. Yes, it's 197. So we are saying that in the contact process, if we want to produce more yield of sulfur 6 oxide, then we have to use a higher pressure because the higher pressure will shift the equilibrium to the to the right. To the right. By uh, increasing the pressure we produce more of uh, sulfur 6 oxide. In terms of the temperature, we should use a lower temperature because this is an exothermic reaction that is favored by a lower temperature. So to increase the yield of sulfur 4 oxide, oh no, sulfur 6 oxide, we should A, increase the pressure to shift the equilibrium to the right. And B, we should decrease the temperature. Since this is an exothermic reaction. This is an exothermic reaction. So it's supposed to be favored by a lower temperature. So we should lower the temperature. So despite that or however, we should not raise the pressure too high. We should not raise the pressure too high in as much as it's giving us more yield as this may become very expensive. Uh, may make the process very expensive. So we need to strike a balance. It should be high but not too high because when the pressure is too high the process becomes very expensive and it stops being cost effective. Equally, the temperature should not be too low. The temperature should not be too low to slow down the reaction or to slow down the process because if the temperature is too low in as much as it is promising a higher yield then it may make the reaction too slow and it stops being economical. So another example is uh, in the harbor process that we saw earlier whereby nitrogen 
plus hydrogen combine to form ammonia and you are saying that this is delta h is equals to 92 kilojoules per mole so we are saying that also this one requires a higher pressure to shift the equilibrium to the right and also a lower temperature so requires a higher pressure and a lower temperature to produce more yield so it is therefore important that uh, the contact process and the harbor process should be carried out at optimum conditions optimum temperature and optimum pressure so we'll have an assignment So the assignment, the first question, what is the effect of pressure on the equilibrium? So what is the effect of pressure on the equilibrium? Generally, number two, we are given an equation, uh, nitrogen plus hydrogen to form ammonia. It's a reversible reaction with an equilibrium. And the delta H is negative 92 kilojoules per mole state the optimum conditions for this reaction which conditions will give us the optimum uh, yield or the maximum yield and b what is the effect of what is the effect of lowering the temperature on the yield of ammonia so we'll stop there until the next time goodbye <music>